Welcome, listeners, friends, and hobbyist collectors. Dr. James Beckett here again with the Sports Card Insights. Today, again, most of these episodes are intended to be, well, even intended to be timeless. That uh, doesn't matter when you listen to it, but uh, and and perhaps today will be like that. I'm really going to talk about New Year's and New Year's Eve types of uh, memories that I have that I want to share with you. Uh, I won't be doing an episode on New Year's Eve, and I won't be doing an episode on New Year's Day. You can just, in, again, enjoy those holidays as I will be with my family, loved ones, and good friends. And actually, the day before that, well, I mean, that's that's uh, that, that's why I'm doing this today. So, uh, like many of y'all, I remember New Year's, New Year's Eve, uh, as I said, we moved around when I was a kid, and then when I was an adult, I had, uh, again, I've always loved sports, so the, the New Year's uh, bowl games, and and uh, again, New Year's was, was just a great, just a great day to, to uh, you know, eat, celebrate, be with family, and watch sports, so in, uh, when I started doing price guides, though, another dimension came into the uh, New Year's and New Year's Eve picture, in that New Year's Day actually was pretty much from 79 to uh, 96, I would say, uh, was my full speed ahead on doing pricing for the uh, baseball card annual price guide, which was, there have been different formats of that. As you, if you've been around over the years, there's the Almanac, which is the, the, the thickest one, and there was the, the, uh, the, Another uh, bigger one, but also the little small pocket-sized one. So most of that work was, well, once you did one, you didn't have to redo it for, they were like abridgments. So the biggest, once you had the biggest one done, the, the uh, medium size of the smaller one was a, was just a subset. And again, to be fair, uh, it wasn't like I had to do in every sense a new book from scratch each year. They were annual. Uh, I did have the previous year's prices in front of me to, and in many cases, well, in some cases, those prices would stay the same, but especially in some of those really dynamic years, it, it seemed like almost everything was going up. If it didn't go up, if it stayed the same, that actually was, was, uh, was not a good thing. It was set, was dormant. And by that, I don't mean it wasn't selling. It just, it just was, it just, it, it wasn't selling more or less than what it had the year before. And you couldn't, you can't just, raise a price in the price guide just for the sake of raising the price if it's if there's no evidence to uh, to warrant that but so so new year's day uh new year's eve celebrated and in many cases woke up uh new year's day and treated that as a holiday for other people as i said about labor day it was my chance to get a head start on the rest of the world so i probably had one eye on the TV for the bowl games in some of those years, if there was a meaningful football game, but mostly I was uh, full speed ahead trying to get going on pricing in the, uh, in the annual book. Uh, one of the things that came up in our, uh, in the way we did the price guides is that by the late eighties and or 90, we were doing the four monthly magazines a month. So we had baseball, basketball, football, hockey, and they each had a deadline, say, on a Monday. But they're, as you know from the calendar, they're occasional five Monday months. And so that would be like a free week for me to, which I generally took to either be on vacation uh, with my family or to be uh, working on a book back when when that was uh, what I was doing. I would... Um, so I would kind of isolate, you know, I had uh, most of my collaborative work for doing the price guide was done uh, prior to when I kind of went into my cubby hole that I had, my, my kind of almost like a closet. It was office next to my office and I'd put on headphones to block out distractions and uh, kind of work into the night of trying to post uh, the, the, the new prices. As I said, most of the collaborative work had been done, the research had been done, but just transcribing and uh posting the new prices was 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 pretty onerous pretty pretty exhausting and yet some of you if you've had uh, uh data jobs that did involved involve something like that sometimes you can get into a zone of um, just you start out and you get some rhythm to the uh the work 
And so I can remember lots of times just being on, um, kind of in the zone, uh, working through uh, one set after another, trying to uh, make sure there was uh, uh, accuracy, you know, integrity to the data, to the to the to the context of of, of the sets that we had back in the old days. We, we we even now people don't have complete data, but you have you you use the data that you have, and you uh, uh, you do the best with uh, uh, the inevitable holes that would be in there, but. Like I said, I enjoyed it. I feel like I got to, there was a, an opportunity to to work uh, at a speed that increased up to a point until you you just got tired. And I remember some of the times I'd be I would be I didn't take time in. I'd have something to drink. I'd have to go to the bathroom every once in a while. But uh, I'd almost get in a weightless state. I'd be I'd be sitting in the same chair, you know, and just working on the computer. And it just, it just all of a sudden you'd feel like you're in a, in a, in a different place. And yet my mind was totally tuned in. You know, I'm, I'm not a, I'm, I'm not a Zen guy, but there's some aspect to uh, just uh, being so uh, tuned into what you're doing. So I think that was part of um, uh, the uh, success of, of uh, the, uh, the books. Uh, the other thing I could say that, again, I'm, I'm not trying to diminish the fact that, uh, you know, I've had Brian Fleischer on and Rich Klein, who also, and, and plenty of the other guys who are very involved in the price guide, uh, authoring and uh, editing process. It's, it's really a lot of work. But again, like I said, you, when you're doing a new edition, you have the previous edition's prices right there, and you have the feedback from so many of the helpful dealers and collectors that uh, that uh, gave us uh, um, price results and, and uh, good insights into whether, you know, if something had gone up, which most things had gone up in those years, by how much. And, uh, and in addition, we had the monthly magazines starting in 84 with baseball and 89, 90, 91 with the others to where we had the major sets were being tracked monthly. And by then I had a, an outstanding team of analysts and, uh, uh, just guys who were hitting the shows, hitting the stores. Um, you know, we had all this mail coming in. And so the, some of the main sets were pretty ready to go. If, if the publishing, uh, if the, we had to go to the printer for the book in, in uh, let's say February something, we would generally have the February prices for the magazine sets ready to go. So I didn't have to really worry about uh, that. Um, One other thing I would say, I guess, is in case you're wondering, but, you know, if since I really had New Year's Day being my launch date for this, um, I guess it goes without saying I'm I'm not a huge drinker. You know, I've I love celebrating New Year's Eve with my with my wife. We generally um, have a nice thing, but it's it's not devoid of alcohol, but it's not excessive alcohol. So uh, it's nice to be able to wake up on, uh, on New Year's morning with a with a clear head. Nowadays, I don't I don't um, I don't do the price guide stuff anymore. So nowadays, like I said, with Labor Day, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day are truly holidays for me where I can enjoy, like I said, family, friends, and football and uh, other things that I want to do. Uh, I didn't thank the sponsors. Uh, you better do that. Uh, again, i got great sponsors, and uh, hopefully this is going to be a great 2020 for them as well. Beckett Media, Beckett Grading, Beckett Authentication, uh, all that is under Beckett.com. Burbank Sports Cards is BurbankSportsCards.com. Uh, Rob has been a, a great friend. Appreciate his uh, support and his uh, industry leadership. And I hope 2020 is a great year for him. COMC, uh, check out my cards. It's ComC.com. Again, I've gotten a lot of enjoyment from ComC in 2019, as I did in 2018 and 2017. Uh, and 2020, hopefully, is, is going to be uh, better. One of my strategies for ComC is... When I put cards on there, I realize I'm not going to sell them all the first month or even the first year necessarily. But if I put a decent price on it and I watch to see if I'm too high, I need to lower it. If I'm too low, well, too low, it's gone. Uh, But so 2020, I hope to sell some cards on ComC that have been posted in previous years. So that's almost like found money. Uh, although I did pay for the cards originally, but uh, it'd be nice to see them being uh, cashed out and in the hands of somebody 
uh, another collector who will really appreciate it. Uh, Heritage Auctions, which is uh, HA.com. I've uh, enjoyed uh, perusing their catalogs, occasionally bidding. And 2020, I think I will have some additional interactions with Heritage Auctions on a professional level. So I'm looking forward to that. Huggins and Scott, I already told you, that's HugginsonScott.com, all spelled out, HA.com was Heritage Auctions. Huggins and Scott, I told you, I won two lots in their last auction, and uh, that was a lot of fun. And as I um, generally there, I don't usually buy single cards. I usually buy something that's kind of fun to unwrap to see what's in there in case there's some, you know, just, I just like the exploration of, of digging into it. So, uh, that was fun. Mike Stadium Scar- Sports Cards. That's MikeSSS.com. Mike's Sports Cards. MikeSSS.com. Uh, enjoy talking to Mike. I really want to get up to Aurora, Colorado in 2020. I don't think I'm going to do a, a special, uh, back and forth trip, but I'm going to be looking for the opportunity if I'm up there in 2020 to pop in and see what must be a really, really fun card shop. Uh, Panini, uh, thank the Panini guys. Uh, 2020, I, you know, 2019, I had a lot of the, uh, well, most of it was, uh, with, uh, with Tracy Hackler. But 2020, I'm going to try to bring in or go visit with uh, some of my uh, other friends at Panini and get get uh, opportunity to have those interactions. Tops, uh, re- again, that was my first card, tops.com, T-O-P-P-S, as you would know from being in this industry. Uh, PaniniAmerica.net, as they're doing more and more stuff uh, at their website anyway. But Tops, uh, looking forward to doing some more stuff with Tops. I think that's uh, glad they're on board and upper deck. Uh, I've got a surprise Upper Deck employee. It won't be a surprise to those who know me, but 2020 is going to have a uh, another guest from Upper Deck and uh, another special episode for Upper Deck. So, got lots of good plans. And uh, instead of working uh, with uh, and keyboarding and, and processing and analyzing as I did for so many of those, those years, now I can just kind of contemplate and relax and think of uh, some uh, fun episodes for the podcast as I watch football and enjoy New Year's. So hope you enjoy it. It's not for a couple of days, but uh, enjoy the holidays. Uh, Don't eat too much. Don't drink too much. Just enjoy in a moderate way if you possibly can. So look forward to connecting with you in the uh, the New Year. So thanks again. Uh, Best to everybody. Happy New Year.